So how are insiders with the Trump administration reacting to the president's uh, new rant this morning on China, more or less really against American companies? I want to bring in with exclusively uh, Housing and Urban Development Secretary Ben Carson. Secretary Carson, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Uh, listen, everyone knows President Trump is upset uh, with the Fed, uh, and he's also upset with this relationship with China. Their retaliation this morning obviously uh, angered the president even more. Uh, but many are saying the president can't order American businesses what to do. He can ask them, he can request, he can even use an, uh, the olive, uh, an olive branch from here to there. What do you make of, of what happened this morning with these series of tweets? Well, you know, the, it, the relationship with China is a very, very long and complex one. And, uh, you know, something has been necessary for a long time. It's finally being done. And I think we just have to kind of leave him to, uh, you know, his area of expertise, and that's negotiating. It's going to be tough, though. No, it's going to be tough. Uh, and I, but to be quite frank with you, I think we're winning this thing. The economic data proves that we're winning it. But we also want to ultimately win it. And American businesses are moving out at, at, at a faster pace than every expert said was possible a year ago. And I think it's right to shame them for sending jobs overseas. But when you, when you start to say, I'm going to order uh, these companies to do things, I think the public gets a little worried. And certainly the market down 550 points in Dow. Uh, worried as well, Secretary Carson. Uh, do you think there's any way, way to mitigate that type of language? Well, I think people just have to recognize that, you know, sometimes things uh, come out of people's mouths in, in ways that they didn't necessarily intend. You have to look at really what is the intent here. And again, the intent here is to rectify this incredibly lopsided relationship that's been going on for a very long period of time. Absolutely, including the fentanyl aspect that China said they were going to stop last July if they have not stopped at all. I do want to switch gears because you're working on something monumental. Uh, you're proposing a rule change that uh, you say is going to promote uh, the, uh, the production of affordable housing really via halting discrimination. So uh, I want you to explain to the audience how this works. This is a, the, the desperate impact rule, right? Right. And, and it simply means that, you know, if a rule or policy has been put in place uh, and unintentionally uh, negatively impacts one of the protected classes, uh, then you have a disparate impact situation. Uh, the problem is it's overly broad. You know, we are 100 percent behind getting rid of discrimination and any discriminatory discriminatory policies, as has been demonstrated by our aggressive pursuit of uh, Facebook, of uh, disabilities, uh, problems in Los Angeles and what's going on in San Francisco. You know, we're not going to let any of this stuff get by, but we don't want a situation that is so complex that the only people who benefit are lawyers, uh, you know, who sue everybody for everything right. under the sun. Right. And uh, so what uh, and, and a good example would be if Congress were to raise the minimum raise, uh, wage to $15 an hour, the people who would disproportionately be impacted are low-skilled people sure. who are not going to get those jobs. A majority of them, or a lot of them, are minorities. So minorities could then bring a suit against Congress saying, you know, disparate impact has been invoked. That's the kind of thing that we're trying to get rid of. So we're trying to provide clarity. And I think that will help both plaintiffs and defendants. The only people who really won't be helped are the lawyers who say, yes, more suits. All right. Secretary Carson, always appreciate it. Thank you very much. A pleasure. Thank you.